walked up to the referee, shakes his dick in the circular motion, as you can see there. The ref says, what are you, trying to start a propeller plane with that shit? Uh-uh! You're down 21, buddy. Go fuck yourself. Colt's getting rocked. And we take a look at the replay here. It is just brutal. Look at this. Patterson shoving his wrist and his fist. All of it right up Anderson's ass. Kind of worries me, though, because it went all the way up there. I don't know what Anderson does in his spare time. But boy, oh boy, that's uncalled for. And it's going to draw a flag. Unnecessary asshole fisting. Well, as number 13 jerks off a bottle, this fucking maniac, the strength coach from LSU, obviously missed the memo to go see the movie Concussion by Will Smith because he's all sorts of fucked up now, and uh, we are getting ready for football. LSU, Mississippi State. There's that little fucking grizzly bear. Look at how happy he is and retarded at the same time. I don't even know where you're sitting at. But... <laughs> Well, after being diagnosed with AIDS, it was obviously a hard road. Holy fuck! That one is driven deep to left field, and that's gone. Holy shit, the Bronx is going apeshit. The pitcher is having a fucking panic attack, just like that. Two to nothing early. Aaron Judge, New York City, rise up. Well, Peter, we look at the replay. Excessive touchdown celebration has been a big issue. This is about as bad as it gets. Look at this. Crowell takes a shit, wipes his ass, Peter. Literally, wipes his ass, and then throws it into the Cleveland fucking crowd. That is bad. Roger Goodell already right in the fine for that one. Well, a very scary moment here, Peter. This bat is flying right towards two young kids. Heads, but wait a minute. The GOAT uses his right arm to deflect the bat and save the day. A beer in the left hand. In his right hand, he's just fucking saving children. Give this guy a medal. Remember that movie, Peter? You know when they say, you know how I know you're gay? Well, it's this. Look at the way Patrick Reed runs. Put a cupcake at the end of that bridge, and maybe he'll run a little faster. Getting beat by a man with a 30-pound bag in his back. It is PGA Championship Week. Who's got it? Well, Peter, cut to six. Do you think we like to rage? Meet T.J. Oshie for par. Two beer cans in his fucking helmet. That one is tracking, and guess what? It pays off to get fucked up and play golf. Peter, it's the only way we can do it. Oshie's on the board and sends it. Peter, what's up, buddy? Yeah, I'll be right there. I'm on the golf course. i got to take care of some business. I'll be in the booth in a minute. You remember that hooker we ordered last night? Uh, 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 Stacy, I think, on back page for 300 an hour? Guess what? Wasn't worth it. She knows too much. See ya! See ya later, you little bitch! Try and screenshot my conversation again. You see what happens? Victory Royale is mine! Well, I mean, he shouldn't have went out last night because look at him. He's retarded. He calls the guy off from center field and then... Ow! Right off his fucking eyeball. Oakland down 17 to 2. Ow. Well... Ladies and gentlemen, we are... Live. God bless our troops. God bless America. And gentlemen, start your engine. I believe in miracles. Yes. I'm going to float like a butterfly and sing like a bee. George can't hit what his hands can't see. Shots fired! Shots fired! Told him I was going to throw a dish, right? Yep. Shit. Man, that ball got out of here in a hurry. You know, anything travels that far, I'd have a damn stewardess on it, don't you think?
ready to go in here. Just give me a chance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Sports Church here on VRS. The pinnacle, the Mecca, the Medina, the Jerusalem, the Temple Mount of entertainment for veterans and patriots. I am, of course, John Cremerain, a.k.a. Mini, your host, uh, 2311, along with my brother, Pookie, over there. Uh, he was a 2311 served me at Las Polgas for several years. The armpit of hell, or as I like to call it, Dante's seventh level of hell. Um, although he did escape for a brief moment into the records room. I know the paper cuts there are vicious. It was pretty tough on him, but I know he, he survived. He made it out of there. Also joining me is Mr. T, a.k.a. Terrell, another United States Marine Corps veteran and fellow cheesehead, hockey extraordinaire expert. And now he's got his kids playing baseball as well. Um, we're still waiting on Pops. Uh, he was up for, um, my son's baptism today, so he had to drive that back down to Louisville. I'm assuming that, uh, he is taking a, uh, a, a brief nap and will hopefully join us, otherwise we won't have an auto racing segment. Um, but I will be definitely stepping away for a second and giving him a phone call or two while one of the other gentlemen on this program, um, go ahead and get on with their segments. I am looking for the lineup while I'm doing that. Let me thank our sponsors. First one would be in Warrior Point. That's Warrior Point with an E.org. Join Warrior Point. Become part of the uncommon few. They have chapters in every single state. It's a tremendous way to link up with old battle buddies, make new ones, and network the hell out. They got resources for all kinds of stuff. Dealing with the VA, suicide prevention, caregiving, all that. A tremendous organization has been with VRS for several years. Can't thank them enough for being a part of our station and help our little dream keep coming true. Uh, make sure you also get over to ThreatCon 5 Clothing. Uh, that is uh, Bulldog's company, and you can catch him. Um, I'll, I'll give you the lineup here in a second. But uh, ThreatCon 5 Clothing has been around for about 40 years. All the money goes directly to helping veterans. Tremendous, <laughs> tremendous clothing, great designs. Uh, just head on over to ThreatCon 5 Clothing website. <clears throat> you click on it from their main page on Facebook. And go over there and check out some of their designs and order you up some shirts and some gear. They got stickers, hat pins. Um, they had all kinds of great gear over there, and they do truly, truly, do truly care about the veteran community and our, our crazy little tribe of ours. All right, here's the lineup for VRS, and this will be changing um, here in a little bit. I'm about to launch one new show. I'm working with uh, a couple ladies to launch another show, and I got a gentleman beating down my door to give himself a show. That might, however, start on the Spreaker side so he can get his uh, get his uh, feet wet a little bit. But here we go. On Monday, it's Threat Cut 5 Clothing. Or Threat Cut 5 Clothing, excuse me. <laughs> Threat Cut 5 Radio with Bulldog and Judy. All times are Eastern, by the way. And I put a written out in civilian so nobody gets confused. Threat Cut 5 Radio with Bulldog and Judy at 7 p.m. And then starting July 1st will be Lunchbox Live. Lunchbox is returning to VRS. One of the OGs of VRS is returning with the gaming show. It's going to be World of Tanks. It's going to be Hearthstone. It's going to be Call of Duty. It's going to be Fortnite. It's going to be uh, World of Warcraft. He's going to do all kinds of things. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. We did a test show. Uh, we did two test shows with that. One of them got 5,000 views. The other one got 2,200 views. People actually watched us play video games and... Uh, and drink. It was pretty hilarious. But that'll be at 9 p.m. directly following Threatcom 5 Radio with Bulldog and Judy. On Tuesdays, we have the Roe Radio Show with Justice Snodgrass, a.k.a. Goose, and Richie the Redneck Pimp King at 6 p.m. Followed by Femvest with Kateria Shree at 8 p.m. And then, right after that, on the Spreaker side of things, is Fenceline Country with J-Dub at 10 p.m. The, uh, when you want to find the Spreaker, the, the uh, links will be posted on the VRS main page. Uh, various other show pages like the bar and sports search. All you gotta do is just click on that link. It'll take you right there. Hit the play button. Boom. You got it. Wednesdays, of course, my show, the VRS Bar with moi, Minnie, uh, Mr. George Partos, or HMFIC, Chris Cornell, a.k.a. the Blue Falcon, and Miss Kateri. Thursday is the Warrior Wallet with Mr. George Partos at 7 p.m. Friday is Friday Night Debauchery with J-Dub at 10 p.m. on the Spreaker side. You'll catch me on that every once in a while when the wife lets me. Uh, I usually jump on for about an hour. Uh, it's a good time. He usually has a theme every week. Last week was uh, American Graffiti. Uh, he's done oldies. He's done uh, rock and roll. He's done hair, uh, hair bands. Um, and it's a fun show. And uh, it's the only way we can play music, generally speaking, without getting kicked off of Facebook. 
uh, Saturday, right now, 1700 somewhere with 8th and the crews. Right now on a little bit of a hiatus. I am not sure if they're going to return next week or not. Uh, take a little break, but hopefully they'll be back soon. It's a great show. Uh, it's slowly but surely getting better and better. On Sunday, it is Super Sunday, people. Super Sunday. All right. <coughs> it starts off with Justice Snodgrass, <laughs> a.k.a. Goose, the golden voice of VRS, which I gave it to. I think I can't stand my voice, so I had to give it to somebody, right? So I gave it to Goose. He does have a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous voice. He has a face for radio, and he's exploiting that with Spearhead Shenanigans at 3 p.m. on the Spreaker side. Then, of course, Sports Shirts with myself, <coughs> The Pook, Mr. T, and Pops talking about everything from the NBA to F1, to UFC, to we talk NBA. NBA. We're going to talk a little NBA right at the start. Uh, and then right after this, uh, we're going to have to get off a little early tonight, actually. Uh, just a tad bit. Uh, the Bear News with George Parlos. He's got a very interesting <laughs> interview uh, tonight. He's got a Marine who is uh, transgender. He's gone through the whole, the whole spiel. So uh, that should be an interesting interview, to say the least. And... I got to put my mic on mute. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And then following, following the Bear News uh, is one of my favorite shows. Great group of guys. Some of my favorite people on the station. Backwoods veterans do BV Nation Radio at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with J-Dub, Sexy Girlfriend, Jonathan Toll, and the high-tech redneck, Mr. Josh Kasher, the man behind the scene. We just lost Pook. That's outstanding. All right, we'll try and get him back in a second while I put that up. Pookie, turn your video back on, you fool. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Come on, you can do it, Marine. Come on. Kill. There you go, kill. Kill. One, two, three, kill. Kill. Now, 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 now they're switched. All right, now I got to move them back. There we go. There we go. All right, gentlemen. Uh, like I said, I, I, I've had an interesting week. I'm about dealing with some wicked back pain. Uh, some crippling back pain. <laughs> Uh, I've probably got about 2,000 milligrams of Motrin coursing through my veins right now, so that's fun. Uh, my kidneys are super happy about that. Uh, but uh, it got rained out a bunch this week. Got rained out two days in a row, Monday and Tuesday. Um, and like, oh, man, well, you don't even have to work. Yeah, but uh, if I don't work, I don't make money. So that's a problem. So, yeah, uh, screw the rain. It looks like it's going to rain all day tomorrow, too, which is no bueno. No bueno. I need to work, even with a freaking back of an 80-year-old. I still need to work. Uh, but, um, had some fun Friday night, did, uh, the, the Legion, uh, Legion Social Night, had some fun playing darts there. Uh, Saturday was kind of, uh, you know, kind of a pretty relaxing day. Uh, and then today, uh, my son was baptized at Guarding the Angels Catholic Church right here in, uh, Mount Washington. Um, nice. a of, yeah, a lot of people came out for that. That was fun. Um, uh, he was a pretty good boy. Uh, didn't, uh, didn't fuss too much. Cried a little bit when he got the water poured over him, but, you know, other than that, no big deal. Uh, Thomas Brander, go to the sports. Shush! Um, all right. But that, was, <laughs> that was about my weekend. Um, uh, let's check in with you guys. You guys get any fresh, uh, hot takes? Pook, we'll go with you first. What's up? What's new? What's happening? And, uh, what's your hot take for the week? Hey, wh what's going on, man? There's a hell of a little blooper show you had at the beginning there. Yeah. You had Isaiah Crowell taking a dump. Yeah. Yep, I missed yep. that. I think I missed that the first time around. Is that guy like a jailbird? What's oh, well, his deal? I don't know. Where's he it's, get that from? Where does he get that behavior from? Uh, I don't know, man. I just I don't, uh, I'm just asking. Creativity. I don't know where he gets it from. Man, I had that kind of creativity when I was a three year old, bro. I know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, I have to say, if you listen to some of these NFL players uh, do interviews, it's kind of like, wow, you studied a lot in high school and college, didn't you? Because you were a pop Warner, they're like, oh my god, this guy's a freak. He's gonna go in the NFL. Don't worry about class, kid. Just concentrate on football. And then they, they then you give them, uh, you know, a $20 million contract, and uh, that works out well, generally speaking. If you ever watch it, ESPN 3030 30 going broke. Eh, that's one of the reasons. Uh, anyways, uh, you got a hot take before we move on and check in with Mr. T there? Well, just a, just a Korean zombie, you know, two-to-one dog last night. I don't know if you saw that. It was, it, he ran right through his opponent. It was a... Uh, this is a pretty excited fight. We'll get into that later. All Maybe right. a little teaser, I guess. I think yeah. I sent you a clip. Yeah, I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll, I'll have to dig it up, uh, but I'll definitely play it for you. Uh, Mr. T, how about yourself? 
Yeah, well, before I get started, I was just going to give a shout out quick to George Pardos last week for filling in for me. It helped me uh, out that I was able to go to a Father's Day party at my parents' house. So I got to spend Father's Day with my dad and he got to see a grandkid. So nice. he appreciates that as well. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm going to give a shout out too, to um, J-Dub and uh, High Tech from the uh, BV crew. Um, Last night on one of our group chats, there's somebody that was having a little bit of uh, anxiety issues, and I'm not going to go into what his problems were, but J-Dub and High Tech got into their vehicle and drove three and a half hours in the middle of the night to go help that vet out, so uh, I want to give props to them for being there for one of our brothers when they need it. Absolutely. Um, and then, uh, other than that, this weekend, um, my son had a game, uh, and Keel, they lost to him that his first game that he played this year. They lost to him twelve to six. That was the one that I said that went like three hours. Yeah. Um, and uh, they went out to Keel. They did pretty good last uh, on Friday night, but uh, not quite good enough to beat them yet. But it, they kept it down to five to four this time around. So they're coming around, getting better. Um, and then uh, my daughter don't play till Wednesday, so I ain't got to. I didn't have to worry about anything with her this weekend. Um, and yeah, today just my wife had a wedding shower to go to for my cousin and uh, just hung out with the kids at the park while she was busy with that. So, um, yeah, not much else going on around here. All right, let's jump into the sports. Let's go to MLB real quick. I'm going to go over to standings and uh, play a quick video. And then uh, we're going to talk a little NBA. And then uh, we'll go into uh, what's going on with the NHL, which is kind of wrapping up now with the draft just ending. And then we'll, uh, depending on whether Pop shows up or not, uh, Pops will go with auto racing first. If he doesn't show up, uh, we'll do UFC. Uh, while Mr. T is doing his uh, uh, NHL, I will step away and try to get a hold of Pops. Uh, and, and hopefully we get his racing statement squeezed in. We're going to we're gonna end a little early. We're going to try and end about five to ten minutes early uh, as best we can because George has got to finagle some things around with uh our broadcast program before he gets on. But uh, let's go over to standings here real quick. See if I can uh, – hopefully I don't lose internet. Uh, we don't want that anymore. We already said that. All right, let's go over to MLB standings here. All right. In the American League Central Division, the Twins are still on top. 5-5 five five in their last stand. They're 50-27, followed by the Indians. or right, eight games back. Seven games over 500, still eight games back. The White Sox are below 500, 5-5 five five in their last 10. They are 36-39. and 39. The Tigers are competing for the bottom of the barrel in the AL Central with the Royals. About, uh, about a game and a half apart, uh, and they're playing terrible baseball. Nobody's really surprised by that. Now we get to the, uh, the AL Eastern Division for Mr. Thomas Brickner and Daniel Eric who are the most rabid Yankee fans I know, and it's the only thing I don't like about either of them. Um, I just I just can't, like, it's just, it's just Yankees, man. You can't, it's, you know, no, you just can't. Um, but if you're from there, you know, hey, you, you, you got to root for the Yankees, right? How could it be a Mets fan? Um, but the Yankees are 49-28, 8-2 in their last 10. They did lose today, but earlier this week they got back um, – Giancarlo Stanton, and I believe it was yesterday or Friday they got back Aaron Judge, so you know what? Red Sox fans, Rays fans, I think it's over, and my hot take is the Yankees are going to run away with the Eastern Division this year. They were already doing it with a beat-up, decimated lineup, and now they got two of the heaviest hitters in baseball back in the lineup, so that makes everybody in that lineup more dangerous. And that's just no bueno for the rest of the Eastern Division. I mean, I mean, holy cow! I mean, they're six thirty-six winning percentage, forty-nine and twenty-eight, eight and two in their last ten. Ugh! I mean, the Rays are trying to hang in there, but that's not going to happen. They're going to fall away. The Red Sox will make their run, but they're really at this point, even this early in the season, I'm calling them a uh, a wild card. Uh, the Blue Jays. Rays are going uh, away. Oh uh, yeah, they're going to fall away. They're they're going away. You sure? Yeah, I, got, I think that young pitching is going to falter come late August, September, um, which it, a lot of times it does. Um, you know, watch out next year, though. Uh, the Blue Jays and Orioles are completely out of it, 20 and a half games and 27 games back already. I mean, it's just that that is over. Uh, the Astros are running away with it, 49 and 30. The Rangers are within striking distance at six and a half games. The Athletics are hanging in there, too, at seven and a half. 
uh, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, who just finished a, ser a series in St. Louis this weekend, where Albert Pujols made his first return to um, St. Louis, hit a home run, which is pretty cool for him. Uh, they're 10 half back. The Mariners are, you know, they're just out of it. They're 16 back. And the National League, uh, the Cubs won today. I'm not sure what the Brewers did, but um, I think they might have beaten the Reds, so I think everything stayed the way it is. But the Cubs are 42 and 35, 4 and 6. I'm pretty sure Cincinnati ben. won, right? The last time I saw it at the uh, at the brunch after the baptism, they were they were down like five to three. Well, you're right, no. you're right, man. Final of the day, seven five. Brewers win. Okay, uh, right. so yeah, everything's the same. Brewers are still uh, a half game back. The Cardinals are are right there. They're right on the heels at forty thirty six. They are hot though, winning seven out of their last uh, ten. They're at 40 36, only a game and a half back. The Reds, I mean, believe it or not, the Reds are still in striking distance as well, as well as the Pirates are, both being five and a half back. They just uh, lit back. up the Astros this week, man. Did you see that? Yeah, you see I, could not believe that. I could not believe that. I was shocked. I, Benny, you told me, you told me they're going to bounce back against the Reds, and I freaking, I, I didn't lose a lot, but I lost a $100 bet, my man. <laughs> then I backed off, and I'm like, okay, that's three in a row they lost. I better back, <laughs> and I back off. Yeah, but well, I, 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 I feel I was, like they can't. I, I go, they're going to bounce back against Cincinnati. You're like, to the Astros, homie. And I was like, all right, <laughs> all right, it's a good time to make a play. Hey, if I was right about it all the time, I'm betting on baseball, I wouldn't be doing this show. Uh, I'd be, you know, I'd be, no, eight, man. I'd be eighth right. Rothstein just no, sitting up, you no, know, no. just making bets. Uh, which the thought has crossed my I've mind. Have you ever tried? Um, all right, baseball Eastern only. Division. What's that? You ever tried baseball only? Have I ever tried just betting straight? He needs to freaking unmute his mic, man. Oh, T? I don't know. Anyways. The Eastern Division. Uh, I was going to say, the thing with the Central Division right now is uh, everybody is just was losing at the same time there. The Brewers or the Cubs, if one of them could have strung some wins together, they could be way out in front of the thing right now, but they both went, went in the shitter at the same time. I they think, they want to get in Cincinnati, man. I think Cincinnati was kind of hot. Well, it seems uh, like now, Cincinnati. Yeah, now both the Brewers and the Cubs are starting to turn things around, but there's there's been a stretch in here where both the Brewers and the Cubs have been losing a ton of games. Hasn't been their uh, best baseball all season. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Thomas Brenner. I saw this. He made a post earlier. Uh, big Yankees fan, uh, former HMFIC here at VRS. He said, Yanks may have lost today, but 26 games in a row. Now with a homer, 159, 159 straight games without getting shut out. That is impressive. And you took three or four from the Astros. And I'm saying, man, I, hey, I said how much I don't like the Yankees, but I always it's tip my hat to them. I, they, I tip my hat to them, and I swear to you, I swear to you on, well, let's pick my grandmother's grave. I watched Jeter's last game, and a little tear got in my eye because I always loved that dude. I thought he was a true Yankee in a class act. Um, I told you. I just called it. The Yankees are going to win the, uh, the AL East. It's going it, to. It, they now they got Stan and uh, Judge back. It's 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 over. It's it's just over. They're just gonna. They don't even have to worry about their pitching. Just I'll score everybody. Um, man, I wish I could. I wish. Yes, uh, you know. I, I wish I could put up some kind of argument, man. They're they're freaking yeah, got bats, you man. You can't. You can't put up an argument. They right. got bats from hell. The NL Eastern Division. The Braves. Are still playing very well. The young, young Braves, uh, 46 and 32, 7 and 3 in their last 10, 1 2 in a row. The Phillies are kind of hanging in there, but, uh, you know, Bryce Harper hasn't paid off exactly like they hoped he would. Now, he might in future, but, uh, you know, one guy can't carry a team and pitching is everything, especially in the National League. So, yeah, I don't know. The Nationals, uh, minus Bryce Harper, are 8.5 back. The Mets are 9 back. The Marlins are 15, which. Everybody thought they're going to be a lot worse. Uh, you you, you got to tip the hat to those players, maybe not the front office, but uh, everybody thought they were going to be a record-setting losing team this year, and it doesn't so far look like that's going to happen. Now the Western Division, the Dodgers are just rolling, 53 and 25, 679 winning percentage, eight and two in their last ten. They won five in a row. The Rockies are 40 and 36. Um, yeah, I'm calling this one right now too. I, nobody's taking nobody's taking this away from the Dodgers. I mean, they might stumble here a little bit. You know, every team, even the really good ones, they'll have a week where it's just things just fall apart for whatever. You guys get tired. Um, you, but you know what's crazy? They're, they're I've been watching these. I've been watching these Dodger games, Minnie, and 
And it's like, even like when shit happens, like bad shit, it would like take a team out of their element and freaking you'd see a team dismantle and fall apart. They just don't let that crap get to them. And they just figure out a way to win, man. Nope. They just make it happen. It's <sighs> like they're a team. They believe in themselves and one another. You know, there's a lot of bats on that team, too. A lot of bats. Thomas Bruckner's. Oh, what's up, Roxanne? Okay, what's up? Hey, Josh Case here. Thank you. Um, thank you for tuning in. Shelly Richie King. What's up, Pimp? Dean Cerny's yeah. in there. What's up? Ethan, what's up? How you doing? Dean Cerny. Uh, <laughs> Dean Cerny says, you yeah. know what time it is? Yes, I do. I know what time it is. And whenever you pop in and you ask me what time it is, I will always do this for you because I think you just get a big kick out of it. So here you go. Uh, let me find the sign back. There we go. Uh, my, uh, my brother Tom's in there too. And, uh, I seen my, uh, cousin Amanda's husband, uh, Ryan's in there too. So thanks for watching us as well. Right on. Um, Thomas Bruckner says, uh, we have four to five top home run hitters in the league in our lineup. Yes, this is true. But. The Cubs are the only team with five guys with more than 15 home runs in their lineup. So, actually, now I think it's like 20, 19, 18, 16, and 16. But, uh, so, yeah. Could be a cubs Yanks series. Uh-oh. Oh, that would start some shit between me and, uh, me and, uh, Brickner and, uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Dan, our original HMFIC. That, that could start some serious trash talking. On which I really don't have a lot to rely on as far as history, but as far as the teams goes this year, I don't know, I might have something. Um, all right, uh, let me play a little quick video that's going to uh, discuss what's coming up in the next week in uh, MLB. And then we'll go to talk about the trade that we didn't get time to talk about last week. And that was, of course, the Anthony Davis trade to the Lakers. Here we go. Oh, I hate to keep talking about them but these Yankees are just so good right now their lineup is a joke I think we're gonna be talking about how they're still dominating baseball I know they're losing today but they were on an eight game win streak I don't see them slowing down anytime soon so we're gonna continue to talk about them how about Pete Alonzo uh, dude hit his 27th home run this afternoon set a Mets rookie record passing Daryl Strawberry I mean, this dude just continues to rake I feel like he hits a homer every day it, it, seriously, I feel like I look at box scores or watch highlights, and I see him hitting a homer every day. I feel like he has 50 already. All right, talking fantasy or reality. Last week, Jorge Soler was a player nominated in our viewer tweet segment. Fantasy. Well, that was uh, disappointing. Okay, hold on. Let's try this again. To survive the tour? Uh, nope. So much for that. <laughs> decided to reset, so screw it! Screw it. It was a good segment, too. It's only about a minute and a half long, and for some reason they managed to screw it up. Or I did. I don't know. One of the other ones. I don't know. Anyways. Alright. Let's talk about the Anthony Davis trade, and I'm gonna start this off with the video real quick. Uh, it's about four minutes long, and, uh, and then we'll get into the whole deal about that. The Pelicans front office Spearheaded by their new general manager, David Griffin, continues to maximize the benefits of the Anthony Davis trade. New Orleans got a lot of draft picks from the Lakers, including the number four overall pick last night, and they flipped that fourth pick to Atlanta. Let's take a look now at this screen. You see what the details of this deal were. They got the fourth pick from the Pelicans. They used it to draft Virginia forward DeAndre Hunter. Pelicans got eight, 17, and 35 last night, and you see some of the players they picked up. They made themselves a very athletic front court and a very interesting team. Laura and Woj pick it up from there. Yeah, we welcome in Adrian Wardenowski, who has not had any sleep, but of course he's still here with us. And Woj, let's start with the trade between the Pelicans and the Hawks. How did it go down? Because you started reporting this in the afternoon yesterday. Well, really since uh, New Orleans won the draft lottery, uh, that conversation has gone on. And uh, the Anthony Davis trade then gave them more picks in New Orleans uh, to, to work out a deal with Atlanta. Atlanta had 8, 10, and 17 in this draft. They were always kind of the natural trade partner for New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans really canvassed the league. They were talking seriously with Minnesota, who's trying to get up. Cleveland was trying to get up. Boston talked to them. Uh, but in the end, the ability for 
David Griffin to be able to move back in the lottery, uh, get Jackson Hayes, who he thinks with Zion Williamson gives him maybe the most athletic front court in the league. It made sense for both teams. And Atlanta, second year in a row, their GM, Travis Schlenk, targeted somebody in the top part of the draft that he wanted. Last year was Trey Young. This year, DeAndre Hunter, who now is, you know, maybe the, you know, he's a defender who can guard multiple positions. Uh, maybe the best def defensive player in this draft from the defending national champions at Virginia. And I think for the Hawks, they have put together now a core of young players over the last draft and this one getting Cam Reddish uh, at number 10 also. The Hawks are positioned to really rise pretty quickly in the Eastern Conference and, and the assets from that Anthony Davis trade keep multiplying for the Pelicans. I think both teams got exactly what they wanted out of that draft last night. Yeah, it was fascinating. I agree with you about DeAndre Hunter, great defensive player. Let's take a look at everything the Pelicans got from trading Anthony Davis. This is crazy. They gave up one year of Anthony Davis, Solomon Hill, and the 12.8 remaining on his deal. The 57th pick yesterday and a future second rounder. What they received in return is enough to make Herschel Walker blush. That includes three players under 25 from the Lakers, three of the top 35 picks in the draft last night, and four more picks through 2024. You can't say enough about this when you see all of that just put on paper there on the screen by Hembo. What sticks out to you, Woj? Well, and not just those assets. It's clearing the cap space. They were able to get Solomon Hill and that 12, 12 and a half million right. off the books. Now the Pelicans are a player in free agency. They will have upwards of uh, perhaps $30 million to go out and pursue, either they, you know, uh, they could pursue a max free agent. I don't know that they're in the, that they might be in the game for any of them. If they wanted to go after Al Horford, they could do that. But they want, I think the ability to draft Zion Williamson changed how New Orleans was going to do this post-Anthony Davis uh, rebuild. That they, with him in the middle of this, they could keep Drew Holiday, you know, an all-star level guard there. They get two starters in Brandon Ingram. Lonzo Ball, and you bring another free agent into that group, this is a playoff team in the West. Typically, when you trade a player of Anthony Davis's caliber from a small market team, you are headed for a full rebuild, and, and they've done just the opposite in New Orleans. Yeah, you could almost argue that by trading their best player, New Orleans got better. This whole thing is really fascinating. All right, great little, uh, great little talk by Woj there, uh, talking about the trade. So here's my... Uh, Here's my statement. Here's my question. Um, and I can read a little bit more on this if you want. In fact, I think I'm going to. Um, but here's my here's my statement and my question. Um, Golden State lost. Got defeated by the Toronto Raptors and Kawhi Leonard. Pretty much by Kawhi Leonard, which was an amazing performance by him. It, he was so talked up and considered, you know, one of the great players. And, and you know, the way he went out in San Antonio kind of soured my, soured my taste for him. But this year in Toronto, wow! I mean, the, the, the dude just just went ballistic, and he went and won himself uh, along with his teammates an NBA championship. Golden State is now going to be decimated. That team is going to be ripped apart. Uh, you know, they're going to go to the winds. I mean, they'll probably hold on to Steph Curry and maybe one other guy, but other than that, uh, they're going to go, kind of go into a rebuild mode and be looking like a a third or fourth, fifth place team in the West. Um, the Lakers trade was Lakers and Pelicans trade was a win now situation. Uh, the Lakers know that LeBron isn't long; and he's pretty long in the tooth. I don't think he's got that many years left in him. Although I think those years will be productive. I think you know LeBron will be LeBron. Um, but uh, I think it's I think it's a move to get the Lakers and LeBron one more wing, one more wing, one more ring, and, and that's about. It. Now let me read into this trade a little bit. In dealing Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, and Josh Hart to three first-round picks, New Orleans Pelicans, for the NBA's most dominating inside presence Saturday, the Lakers did more than just add a giant superstar. They created a title team out of a losing team. They turned a group of underachievers into a group that could overwhelm. They returned a hope to a hopelessly lost franchise. Real hope, ring hope. It was a swamp the Lakers fans desperately sought after watching their team miss the playoffs for a franchise worth six consecutive seasons. In recent weeks, they witnessed Magic Johnson's sudden regnation, general manager Rob Palenka's botched coaching search, and enough front office nonsense to make them wonder if the chaos would ever end. For them to now see when the NBA's best five players walk through the door is literally a sight for sore eyes. This is a trade for LeBron James' interest. 
You'll think he'll mostly invest in this team by now. By creating this legitimate title, hope the Lakers should start seeing the legitimate LeBron. This was a trade for potential free agents attention. You think somebody like Kyrie Irving would want to join this group? Kemba Walker would also probably love to play here now. They need a port guard, they should be able to get one. They need a shooter, they should be able to find one. One of the league's most unsettling environments just became one of the most attractive. This was a trade for Davis's future. He's a free agent at the end of the season, and although his representatives have said he wanted to play in Los Angeles, the Lakers no longer have to worry about him spending the year being wooed by someone else. He's a Laker now, and probably will be a Laker for a long time. This is a trade for Kyle Kuzma's empowerment. They kept Kuzma. Can you believe that somehow a major trade for a big-time star and he still managed to hold on to arguably their best player and fan favorite? This is a trade for Golden State's vacancy. With the Warriors finally decimated and probably gone, the path to the NBA Finals has been cleared for another dominant West team, and the Lakers just became it. This was finally a trade for Polinka's reputation. The most criticized executive in the league just pulled off a deal that made the Lakers relevant again. He not only saved LeBron James era from crumbling almost before it began, but he also probably saved his own job. And that strange sound he's hearing today is applause. This was even on this from Twitter, a former basketball boss, Johnson. Great trade, Rob Polinka. Job well done. Somebody shut that dog up before I lose my shit. There was even this on Twitter from former basketball boss, Johnson. Great trade. Job well done. I just read that. Congratulations to owner Jeannie Buss, who has stubbornly supported Palenka through recent embarrassments. The front office may still be a mess, but as of Saturday, it's a mess that managed to see the Lakers on a potential title course for the next five years or more. Just imagine if they signed Irving this summer and locked down Davis next summer, employing 227 and under stars just as James is receding into the sunset. Talk about championship sustainability. This trade could eventually result in more than one ring. Of course, there will be booze. Some folks around the league are around the league will probably think the Lakers gave up too much. All right. Uh, those folks don't understand Los Angeles. The city championship expectations the pain of a six-year playoff drought. The increase of the big bucks played by low ticket holders to see a title while James can still move. The Lakers have to win now, or they will be blowing the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity afforded to them by one of the best players ever. The Lakers have to win now or risk losing the attention of a city that has grown sick of all the drama. So the three first-round picks are a ton of picks. So what? James could be retired by the time those picks are cashed. Uh, Brian Ingram finally began showing some potential last year, but the Lakers are done with potential. Josh Hart was a solid player, but the Lakers could find another solid role player. As a reminder, this is Anthony Davis. This is a 26-year-old player who has a career average of 24 points, 11 rebounds, and 2 blocks. This is a guy who can run the floor and dominate on both ends. The impact he will have... While sharing the ball and court and moment with James should make for the great theater and wonderful basketball. Davis does have his flaws. He is prone to nagging injuries, having played in more than 68 games just twice in his seven seasons. He's also not afraid to submarine a franchise with his personal agenda, as this season's Get Me Out of New Orleans demand showed. The drama that caused by his agent Rich Paul, who is also James's agent, and that's another problem. If you think Paul had undue influence on legs before, well, now he practically runs the team. There could be a point when his client's interests do not coincide with the Lakers interests and that can make things get ugly again but Saturday was not a day for ugly it was a day for the brow beauty the first day of the Lakers year of 80 the dramatic changing of a desperate and downtrodden climate in the end that who cares who won the trade the Lakers may have just won the 2020 NBA championship what do you guys think about this deal huh they gotta get more pieces to win the championship. They're gonna get them. They've got the. I don't know. Now. They've got the room. I don't know. I don't know about we'll that. What... I don't right. know about Mr. T. Here we go. Hot take right here. Call it right now. Know. They're winning LeBron's the NBA never had a center. Next Not year. like this. Yeah. LeBron's this... never had a center. Le no. LeBron can bring the ball up the court, and they got Kuzman anyway. I mean, I... come on. This... LeBron's it's never over. had an opportunity like this. He's never played no. alongside another star like this. Ever. No. Well, no. Dwayne Wade, but he was like geriatric Dwayne Wade. He was like freaking, you know, I, taking I, his I call it Lakers win, oh. win NBA championship 2020, 2021. They win it. It's over. It's over. It's over. They get the pieces they need, and they'll get them. Trust me. They'll get them. What, they, crown them? I, I, I'm crowning I them right now, I could see the 2021 season. I don't think it's going to be this season, though. I but think I they'll think. get another piece in the next season. That that'll I, be their year. It's I, this year. No, it's this year. Gonna, I'm I do you, think. I do LeBron think they're is, gonna win a. LeBron is re re energized by this. Now he's got Anthony Davis. You know they're gonna add a shooter or a point guard. 
Uh, and that could be one in the same. Well, they they could, you know, yeah. That's all they need. They get a shooter. Oh! So, I'm telling you, they're going to win it. They're going to win it. But that being said, it even took a year. Remember when they went and they made that super team down in uh, – Miami. Yes. When, oh, he's taking his talents to South Beach and all that. I can't remember the third guy in that trade. I, 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 Bosh. Chris, Chris Bosh. Chris Bosh. And I fucking, Bosh. I met, that's terrible. I met him. He came and ate, uh, and I served his table at Jeff Ruby's. And, well, and, and at the Belterra Casino in Florence, India. Well, yeah. the thing with Chris Bosh is he kind of, well, uh, yeah, it was like 50%. Well, kind of, how do you forget there, this guy, man? I know. I, I if he walked, he looks like a raptor. I, I, I know if he walked into my house, I'd be like, "Oh, what's up, Bosh?" Like I, I would know. I, I it's, it would. My brain would connect through the uh, antifreeze and the fireball and the whiskey and the barley wheat and the hops and the beer and it, 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 it would find its way through like the photon makes its way through the sun. You know, it takes like years, but it would get there. And if I saw him, I'd be like, "Yes, it's the raptor guy. It's Chris Bosh." Like I instantly remember him. Uh, he was actually, the reason he showed up, he was dating one of our cook's um, uh, sisters. I was actually married to her, actually. So, uh, yeah, that's why he came in. He was in town. And, uh, yeah, he brought his uh, his posse, if you want to call it that. And uh, they spent a lot of money. And I, and I walked out uh, with with my rent, basically. That nice, night. man. Yeah, yeah. They spent a lot of money. Drank a lot. And uh, crushed that raw bar, let me tell you that. Uh but yeah, I, I'm crowning them. I'm crowning them right now. It's it's over. It's the Lakers are going to win it next year. I'm sorry. It took it's them just... a year. It took them a year to get things together over there in uh, yeah Miami. Yeah. Remember, yeah. Dirt Dirt knocked them out. Yeah, that first year. Dirty Dirt. He played out of yeah, his mind I... in that series too. Oh, it was freaking mind. That was I think that was the end of Dirk. I think he put that so was much, the end of Dirk. Yeah, he put everything into that, and then after that, his body's like, uh, no, we're done. Too many battles. We're done. Too many we're wars, done. man. Yeah. Same thing happened to Kim Olajuwon, man. Remember that run he had, a couple championships, and you knew that guy was just—you could see a little bit, of, a little bit of hurt in him, but he was just crushing it. And then after that, what happened? Phew, just went down, you know. But he knew his time was there, and 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 he 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 just put his body through hell to win those rings so, and get that recognition. And LeBron's gonna do that. And I think LeBron so you're is saying, gonna so, do two, two or three years, and LeBron's retired. If so we're not it. arguing. We're not arguing whether there's going to be a championship. Even T's on board with whether there's going to be a championship. I think, right? yeah. I think they'll win a championship, just okay. not this year. <laughs> How many? I say minimum octopete. 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 I don't know, man. I think they'll get two know. or three out of this, and that's about it. Hey, all jokes aside, um, LeBron is get ain't, ain't getting any younger. No. That's well, why I think, no, I, think I could maybe what, steam ran off four. What do you think? If they if they get one this year, because that's gonna be the hard one. Yeah. Because they gotta put everything together. Everything's gotta come together. They gotta gel together as a team. They yeah. gotta have that chemistry. You know, any championship team, any any athlete will tell you, any athlete on that level will tell you that there's a chemistry when you have a championship team. There has to be. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. And, yeah. And, and you'll so, see it you'll see it real early. But I think LeBron's gonna do that's why I brought up Akeem, you know, and I brought up Dirk. Is I think he's gonna go full on. I think You're he's gonna just a sports destroy, alchemist, Minnie. He's gonna destroy his body and, and, and just give everything to get those next two or three rings, and then he's gonna go out and be like, "I'm done. I tied Michael. I'm good. I, you know, I can walk away, and you guys can argue about this shit until the end of freaking time, which of course we will, because Michael will always be my boy. Um, you know, but kids who grew up with LeBron are gonna say it's differently but uh you know that's the way and it goes that dude, michael jordan man he's so freaking bitter did you see him at his hall of fame speech he's yes. still talking about how he got benched when he's a sophomore man yeah how he got, yeah what the <laughs> hell that guy what drives that guy doesn't drive you and me man that guy's like oh oh you think i can't oh yeah. Oh, an effort mother mother you think i can't <laughs> well i can right that yep. guy's I guess that's what that's his competitive edge. That's probably what separates him from LeBron. But you want to talk about who's the best basketball player? Give me a break. <laughs> it's Michael Jordan. All right, well, Give me a break. <laughs> while, while, while we're hyping this up, uh, though, then who, who do you think's a better combo there in LA? Then you got um, the current one of LeBron and Anthony Davis, or do you think it was better when they had Shaq and Kobe together? Man, I don't know. Because we're talking about three or four. 
championships. Uh, well, how many did Shaq and Kobe have together? I'm not really. I don't well, memorize Kobe that. Ran, you about Shaq. chemistry. That's Kobe ran much. that guy right out of town. We know that. Yeah, but I mean, bad. as far as just on the on the court, God, they were they were just so disturbing. Shaq's um, a monster, man. Yeah, give, he was. Give freaking oh god. Give. LeBron Shaq. Oh, my God. <laughs> a monster, man. The guy wasn't even – the guy was a giant among among giants. Yeah, he was. He certainly was. Um, let's see here. Um, let's go ahead and switch gears. Unless you guys any, – anything else to say, I think we covered it pretty well. Why don't we go into oh. uh, a little Mr. T and some NHL if you guys – unless you guys got something else you guys want to talk about that, Trey. I think we covered it. I don't yeah. like I don't like the fact that you're trading away your future. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah so you're, you're, I you're, think win, like, you're win now mode. You got to You got to. But you have. Trigger. You got You got to pull the trigger. You got to yeah. do something. Was it worth? If it's worth, if you can rattle off however many championships, if you can just rattle off one, it's yeah. worth it. So yeah, obviously, I I'm on the side of the trade, but I I, I hate giving away your future. Yeah, but the, yeah, you, know, you know how draft would, picks go, man. You know, you know. I mean, you never know, right? Yeah, you never you know never how know. draft picks go. Oh, you could be the Cowboys. Yeah. You know. Like with the Herschel Walker trade, I think that was referenced in that video that yep. you had. Yep. So you could be the Cowboys, or then again, you know, who knows what you get in the draft? Who knows how these draft picks pan out? Yep. Let's yeah. Well, yeah. And at some point, you got to switch to a win now mentality, which, especially in Los Angeles, which is a company or accustomed to winning, um, you got to you got to go to a win now mentality at some point. Um, that's been one of the biggest complaints around here, like with the Packers for years is we're always just good enough to maybe make it to the playoffs, but they don't make the moves to actually win the championships at some point. What do you, you guys need? Pull the trigger. What do you guys need right now? Uh, a the much, Packers, we need a lot right now. Uh, Cause yeah. Uh, yeah. A solid, need some, uh, need some defensive backs, huh? Uh, you need some wide uh, D mainly. It's, it's a D and we need a consistent, Thousand yard multi threat running back, a guy who can catch out of the backfield, get a thousand yards on the ground, take the punishment. Eddie Lacy, uh, wasn't it? No, <laughs> hey, do stay away from not a big creeps. enough window with that guy. Yeah, he was, he was he, good for a little bit, but he could say, Yeah, away from he had like cream, a man. yeah, he was a Christian, yeah, he, guy. he was. He was he was the food guy, and then his career was kind of like what RG3's career was, except for RG3's was an injury problem, and his was brought on by yeah the donuts <laughs> or that or if you look up his tweets and stuff, because one of our local uh, sports guys here was going through like his tweets when he was at uh, Alabama is like that China food dough. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> like half his tweet half his tweets were about food. <laughs> Yeah, no wonder he got fat. I, I like that. <laughs> All right, that was going back to like when he was in Alabama and everything. Too. It was like it, it was not like we didn't know he had a problem with uh, his weight. <laughs> All right, Mister T, you ready for your uh, NHL season wrap up, championship wrap up, draft wrap up? Yeah. Um. So obviously, last week you guys went into the um, Blues winning the cup. So. Oh. Well, so that's been already covered, so I guess I'll move on to free agency. And, um, well, we had a surprise with a player that's going to have to medically retire. I think I'll save that one for last, though. But um, the two biggest trades right now have been made out of necessity for salary cap space reasons. Um, the first one I'm going to go into is Patrick Marlowe. He got moved from the Toronto Maple Leafs over to the Carolina Hurricanes, which – Carolina had a pretty good playoff run last year, so he strengthens, strengthens their team quite a bit. Um, he's getting a little bit up there, though, but Toronto's moving him because they want to make space because Mitch Marner is looking for a deal. And even though the Maple Leafs lost that first-round series with the uh, Bruins, Marner was a big reason that it went to seven games. He kept them in that series, and he deserves what he's looking for. But it's not going to come cheap. So Marlowe's gone. Long time leave going to the Hurricanes. Um, we'll see how that works out for him. Um, I think it's pretty good deal, actually, on both ends for both teams. I think it's 
strengthens the Hurricanes up for now, but the Leafs are looking more towards their future. Um, they're sticking with Mike Babcock as their coach, who they got from uh, Detroit, who had a number of successful seasons there. And um, if that's the coach's philosophy, try and build the future. That's where they should be going. Uh, the other one, which was even bigger, is uh, P.K. Subban, who played for the Nashville Predators, team that I personally like, is getting shipped off to the New Jersey Devils. Um, he got traded over there for uh, two players and two draft picks. Uh, the Predators got Steve Santini and Jeremy Davies back in return. Uh, mainly the Predators need to save some salary cap space. They got some good players that are going to be coming up for contract negotiation in the future. Um, but neither of these two players that the Predators got back in return, I don't see them being up to the level of Subban. Subban was pretty much the face of the NHL a couple of seasons ago. And <laughs> with, with the Subban family, I'm just wondering when they're all going to come together because there's actually three brothers that are either in the – well, two of them are in the NHL right now. One of them is playing in the minor leagues in the AHL. You got PK, who's the star defenseman. Then you got Malcolm Subban, who's playing out in Vegas as a backup goaltender to the flower out there. And then you got Jordan Subban, that's a forward. So I got all three sections of the ice covered in that family. So maybe someday we'll see them all get together. But PK seems to be the one that's always on the move. Um, I'll go. I got covered too much in the draft because most of these guys you're not going to see next season. Uh, the uh, NHL has, if you compared it to baseball, they have kind of a system where you got two minor league teams there. So a lot of these guys you're going to see either in the ACHL or the AHL for a few years. But I will go into number one. We had uh, Jack Hughes. He played for the uh, Team USA under-18 team. So USA covered the uh, number one pick in the draft this year. And uh, he's looking. he looks like a good prospect. Uh, the Devils got a lot stronger in this uh, draft free agency period here, picking up Hughes and P.K. Subban. Uh, Hughes, while he was at the um, U18 team for here in the U.S., he had 74 goals for him, 154 assists in two years of play for him, and totals up to 228 points, which I believe the assists and the points are both records for the U18 team. So the Devils made themselves a bit stronger. Probably another year or two, you'll see them uh, being competitive in the playoffs even. Um, and then the big story I wanted to get into was um, Ryan Callahan. He, uh, If you follow hockey, you might know who he is. He played for the uh, Lightning this year, um, which was the President's Trophy winner, had the best record in the regular season. But uh, he was diagnosed this week with degenerative back disease. So his career is over. Uh, doctors are telling him he can't play professional hockey anymore. And it's really sad to see a guy, especially someone with that much talent, get taken out by some some uh, disease like this. Um, I think the last I can really think of that was also in hockey with uh, Brian Bickle got taken out too by a disease. Um, he played for the uh, Hurricanes when he got diagnosed, and then he was uh, with the Blackhawks while he won a couple of their cups. So just a terrible way to see a player have to go. And I don't know if uh, Minnie's back yet, but uh, Pookie, did you have anything to say? I don't know. What's, what exactly is that degenerative back disease? That's that's kind of interesting. Um, the, just the thought of that, like your back back's falling apart. It's gonna it's gonna go to hell. And that's uh, the end of it. Yeah, basically, it um it attacks the um it attacks the spinal cord, spinal column. Uh, I think it was more in the lumbar from what I was reading on it. Um, so your lower so, back, yeah. Gets, right? Yeah, eventually he's eventually he you know gets the he might be wheelchair bound eventually with this disease. Is that what's going on? Basically, yeah, yeah. He'll be he'll probably more than likely eventually end up in a wheelchair. Um, terrible. Yeah, just terrible guy with as much talent and you know to be a professional hockey player it takes a lot of work. Somebody has put that much 
work and to their own physical fitness to be taken to the point where physically they're probably not going to be able to do anything is going to be hell for this guy. So, um, just, wow. you know, I, I pray the guy yeah, so I pray so- can find some way to help him out. Maybe then not you're- to get a, maybe he won't ever be able to play again, but hopefully they can at least avoid, you know, being wheelchair bound for the rest of your life. Yeah. That, that'd be great to avoid that. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, who knows, you know, the way medical medicine advances, I mean, he might be the guy that that helps the next athlete or just average person break through. They're going to give him some bionic legs. (laughs) If you check out on the ice, he's going to have magic legs from like right here here down. He's going to be a Uh, machine. That that was uh, that was a good story. I forgot to. I think it was a couple weeks ago I missed uh, speaking of bionic legs. There was one of the guys that was uh, in that uh, Humboldt Broncos accident that uh, there was video of him on the ice for the first time since that with his uh, with his uh, leg thing on there. So I God. yeah, I should look up that video and bring it up sometime in the future. But That guy, the Blade Runner. Remember that guy? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. He's in... He's like in jail, yeah. He's he's in prison now, yeah. In prison now, yeah. Oops. But yeah. And speaking of blade, the uh, guys with the blades for the legs, uh, we had a good article up on our uh, Facebook page earlier this week about the uh, Wounded Warrior softball team. We're already past baseball, but we should throw them in there right away. They got a uh, on the twenty seventh. They got a game coming up in North Dakota. Um, the USA. Patriots is their team name now. They used to be called the Wounded Warriors. Um, hopefully, I'm trying to. I'm working on trying to get an interview with one of the players from the team. Actually, I have a little bit of a connection with one of the players from the team. He went into the Marines after me, and my dad actually coached him when he was in uh, little league and midget league. So, I'm working on trying to figure out a date that's going to work on to get him on the show. That'd be awesome. Man. But uh, that would be awesome. we are. We are big supporters of the uh, USA Patriots uh, softball team here at Sports Church. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, me and Thomas Brickner are going back and forth. I think you can see it in the chat about the the Cubs <laughs> and whatnot. He's giving me a lot of shit. He like he, he loves to. He loves to give me a lot of shit. Uh, uh, I, I jumped in there for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I saw your little thing, your little miss two play <laughs> Well, you know what? Milwaukee was a beast last year, but did they go to the World Series? Yeah, I know we got taken out in the – you know, that's the thing, too, with this year. I just – I uh, the front office at Milwaukee, I just don't feel like there's as much of a commitment to uh, getting back there this year as there was Dude, last the year. the money's not there. But wait, wait, just hold on. Just wait until, you know, um, which we're going to get into in the next week or two. Because the trade deadline is going to start creeping up on us, All Star games creeping up on us, and just wait. You no, know, Milwaukee has pulled moves in the past, bringing over CC Sabathia. Oh yeah, last, you know, you know, they last yeah, year they last made moves. Year they, so and there's, they made moves. They got Stockus here when we were in the yeah, hunt. So and he's a that was big. Um, he's their second baseman, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I love him, dude. I, uh, I, I well, watched, they, they've been moving him around. Um, I like yeah, him at sometimes second. Sometimes he plays third. I like him at second. second. I like him at second. Like I do. I like. I, I watched uh, some of the Reds. Um, is it now I have MLB TV uh, again, and so I can watch all the like, any game I want to, whenever. And so if the Cubs aren't on, I'll, I'll pick whoever you know I'm, I'm interested. In. So if you know if the Brewers are on and they're playing somebody tough, I'll, I'll watch them. Or you know I, I watched some Yankees. Yes, Thomas Brickner. I watched the Yankees. I tip my hat to them. Um, 27 World Championships, you can't deny that. Um, but um, I, I don't like them. Uh, but uh, uh, if, but uh, if we're gonna move, if we're gonna move somebody, I think it's gonna be Shaw. Yeah, I think he'd be trade bait this year. We got we got that Keston Hira that's playing Triple A right now. He came up for a little bit while uh, Shaw went down on his rehab assignment, and he looks even better than Shaw. Um, but the thing with Shaw is he makes more money, and they can't just they. They brought him up because they're paying for him. Yeah, the but thing though, the thing, though you gotta, you gotta, the thing you got to worry about is like, okay, so Shaw's an established uh, MLB guy. 
Um, the book's already out on him, and he knows how to make the adjustments back and forth. You bring up that young kid. Yeah, he performed well, but what happens when the book comes out on him and the scouts figure him out? And, and all of a sudden it becomes C- Cody Bellinger, for, who's going off like a <laughs> maniac this year. But when the book finally came out on Cody Bellinger was throw him a slider over the middle of the plate and let it break in, and he'll miss it every single time. Like, the dude just could not hit it. You saw it in the playoffs. You saw it in the World Series. I mean, he just, you know, dude couldn't hit a, a slider. He couldn't hit it one. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it just it was this giant hole in his swing. Um, so you got to worry about that too. You got to worry about yeah. you know, the young guy. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, they'll tee off on fastballs, but when they see the breaking shit that's in the show, you know, they'll they'll. If he can make the adjustment, he'll be fine. But a young guy that can that can screw up your head real bad. If all of a sudden you know you come out just breaking straight out of the gate, and then all of a sudden. They, they got the book on you, and they're like, all right, all you got to do is start up a fastball up and high, change up away, throw him a breaking ball uh, on the inside part of the plate, and you struck him out. Or he grounds out, yeah. and, and it leaves you ground out. So, you always got to think about that, because now with, you know, not that I love uh, analytics, I think there's a purpose for it in the game. I think too many people rely on it, because baseball is still a thing of execution. You still have to execute. You still have to hit the ball. You still have to. The pitcher still has to put the ball where it's supposed to be. Um, so you can't always rely on it. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah. We'll Point's see. Taken. It, it, um, it's it's going to be the it's going to be the Cubs and the and the Brewers all the way down to the wire this year, I believe. Unless you know, yeah. we have a couple catastrophic injuries on either side. I mean, Rizzo's heating up. Bryant's finally hitting. Uh, Javi's just being Javi and just destroying shit. Um, you know, Wilson Contreras is hitting. Schwarber is leading off. And despite his low batting average, has a tremendously high on base percentage. And is still hitting home runs, too. So, uh, yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. Let's get back to uh, – you, you got anything left for hockey for us? I thought you were going more into the draft. Uh, yep. Well, the main – Main thing I was talking there with was, uh, yeah, Team USA had the uh, top um, draft pick there going to New Jersey. Um, it's hard to really get into a lot of the, like I said earlier with the draft, um, most of these players, you're not going to see them next year. Right. They're going to either be playing in the AHL them. or the ECHL. Most Hughes, of them you might. You might be seeing right, but like you know, what, um, like the top three, you know, top five picks. You're not going to see those guys in the NHL next year. Top five, you might. So even even at that, sometimes it takes them a year or two to go through the uh, through the minor system there. Okay. Um, Hughes, I ex- I expect to see him out there next year. Your top five guys, you, you probably a good chance you'll see a few of them, but. Uh, Especially once you get out of the first round, you're not really going to see a lot of those guys during the season. Um, definitely not on opening night. Um, and then as far as the breakdown of where guys are coming from, it's there's a lot of different places the NHL can draft from. You got the USA developmental team where we got under 18 kids, basically kids that are still in high school yeah. on there. You got the um, junior leagues, which there's the Canadian leagues, which are breaked into three different leagues, and eventually they all meet together to play for the Memorial Cup later. Um, those are teams like uh, J Dub and High Tech would be watching in the Portland Winterhawks and stuff. Um, a lot of kids in between the ages, uh, I believe it's 16 to 20 years old in that league. And a lot of kids in that league are playing to either try and get drafted in the NHL or even just get noticed by a college and sign with a college team. Um, and then here in the States, we have the USHL, which is their own separate entity. They play for the Clark Cup. Um, they got, again, it's the same kind of age groups there. You got the um, teams like Green Bay Gamblers and Cedar Rapids has a team and few mainly uh, Midwest and East Coast teams. Green Bay, Green Bay Gamblers. Green Bay Gamblers. Where are they? Where are they going? Where are they gambling at? Ho Chunk Casino? No. Uh, 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 Oneida. 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 Oh, Casino. you go up to Green Bay, Pook, and Oneida owns everything. 
They're the gamblers, yeah. baby. They own don't gas stations. Don't, don't yeah, they don't own don't restaurants. Know. They own the casino. They, they own NIDA is everywhere in Green yeah, Bay. That was the first place I gambled at with a fake ID with my grandfather when I was underage. I was like 17. is like 18 and up over there. Yeah. They're like, sure, this kid's 18. My grandfather's like, yeah, he's 18. Nice, nice. The oh. Green Bay Gamblers. How can you not like that name? That's it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's... One more, one more baseball, <laughs> one more baseball note. Um, I don't have the list in front of me. We'll have it next week. Uh, but Vladimir Guerrero Jr. will be in the home run derby. And I, I want to do another hot take, but I can't until I see the full list. So maybe I, when Pook's doing it, I'll look at doing his segment. I'll look it up and see if they've named everybody in the home run derby yet. But that's, that's I, kind this, of a big deal because this kid is, the last... is raking. He is straight raking. He's smaller than his dad in height, but he's stockier, and he can straight rake the ball. And he's already the fan favorite in Toronto. They love him. I mean, he is just—he's funny. He loves the game. He's got a really cool attitude. He hustles his ass off. He's a, I don't know if I'd call him a 5 2 player, but he's pretty damn close. Um, and uh, let me look at the rest of the list when it comes out. I'm going to try to see if I can find it now. Um, I don't know if they've announced everybody yet. I just know that he said he would do it. They offered it to him, and he said, yes, I'll do it. So let me look at the rest of the list, and I'll run it down and see who's in it. But I, I might make a hot take before the end of the show and pick – Vlad Jr. to win the Home Run Derby this year. Yeah, it is a hot take. He could win some money that, on that if you're right. He is a he is he is a beast, and he is. Who just, Toronto just get done playing the Yankees? Before the no, series they're in no, right now. No, the Yankees were playing the Astros this weekend. Before that series, what was it? I don't. Who was the Yankees playing? I don't remember. I don't know off the top of my head. If Thomas Brickner is still in here, I'm sure he will tell you us. Know. Yes, he is, because he's a rabid Yankees fan. And I, I miss him being on Sports Church. He was uh, me, uh, Thomas Brickner, uh, Bulldog, Josh Miller, a.k.a. Lunchbox, and myself were the original Sports Church show. And then it, it got slowly whittled away down to just me uh, on the radio side for a while. But uh, we had some great baseball arguments. Um, he um, he loves his baseball, and he knows it. And so we we would go at it uh, tooth and nail uh, about baseball, and it was great, 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 great radio. He he does know his baseball. He loves it. Grew up in it. Played it. Um, but Pook, hey man, it was the Angels. They it's, played. The, they were playing the Angels. I was confused. Never mind. I caught a game. I caught a game against the Angels. That's where I was. I I got exposed to that guy. It's Vlad not, Guerrero Jr. I want to say hey to Rebecca Wickler. Thank you for tuning in the show. Make sure you share us out. Everybody else in there, make sure you like and share us out as best you can. Um, yeah, we could use the help. Yeah, we got to get the, we gotta get the uh, sports shirts out of the cellar. All right, Pook. What's up? Talk to me. It's on you. Are man. you ready to worship? Uh -huh. Oh, let us proclaim the mysteries of what is MMA. <laughs> there we go. There we go, baby. There we go. We know where we worship. Yeah, we worship at the sports church, my man. Yes, we this do. This week we're going to the temple. What did you call it? You call it the Mecca? You the, call it the... The Mecca, what? the Medina, the Jerusalem, the Temple Mount Medina, of sports. Jerusalem. Yeah. Of sports. Yeah. That's right, my man. I gotta, I gotta look up some more, uh, some more like centers of religion, like uh, Confucianism, Taoism, Hinduism, and just write that all into the intro, so that I get it all. I, I cover everybody because you know we don't want to be exclusive. I you know, but all right. No, you know what? You know what we should do? We should get um Bulldog to design us a shirt for our show. But since it's all Marines that are doing this show, for the most part, we'll have a church drawn out in Koran. It'll be awesome. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't like that. I think maybe we should have like, like some kind of really big muscular devil dog with a, with like a, like, like a, like a, uh, you know, like, I don't know, like a saw, like maybe not a saw in his hand or I don't know. And then maybe yeah. I'll have some. All right, well, I'm gonna put wait, you two. In, I'm gonna put you two in charge of that, and and you guys. Fi you out. know, maybe maybe some filing cabinets, and maybe some staplers while we're at it, because we all know what I really did. 
Yeah. Yeah, we got we we, we got to find a lots, logo like what we got right now cuts. is so generic. Lots of paper cuts <laughs> in the in the in the office ops up there. The ASP, man, that know? wasn't even the easiest gig, man. The easiest gig I had in the Marines was BQ, man. Holy crap, was that easy? No, that was you know what my eight. easiest gig was. Running the, I don't know, uh, going, going to the air wing? I don't well, know, maybe going, was, to, going to the air wing? Dude, that Leaving was the real brutal. Marine Corps and going to the air wing? That was pretty brutal. <laughs> dude, that was pretty brutal. I'm telling you, it really was. Like, they hated me there because I told them they were all stupid and they were going to kill themselves. Like, their ASP was so disorganized and completely uh, uh, dangerous that, like, I, might... I mean, like, the CO loved me. CO loved me. I ate lunch with the CO almost every day. But everybody else, You're the CEO's me. pet. Everyone hated you. Yeah, well, because he, <laughs> I unfucked his ASP. He realized. I went straight to him. I said, "Sir, your ASP is fucked. Straight up." He's listening to Rush Limbaugh eating his eating his lunch, and I'm like, "Your ASP is fucked." And I went on, "Fuck it. Can I do that, sir?" Oh yeah, go ahead. You got carte blanche. So I'm telling staff and CEOs what to do. So they didn't like that. Cause nah. they it's not their fault. They did. They they went to air school. They went to air air ordnance school. They don't. They didn't know shit about running an ASP. They don't teach them that shit. They don't. So yeah, it was a very light. Anyway, but these Chow Hall don't know ammunition supply. The Chow Hall was the yeah. shit in the wing, man. Oh well, yeah, no, it no, it was nice. It was nice. Yeah, and the parents were, like, were fucking like living in a uh uh. And like uh, a Marriott suite, it was unbelievable. Yeah, and you were San Diego. You're right to San Diego, man. Oh yeah, oh, right yeah. there. Yeah, I surfed a lot. Yeah, but, All right. Anyways, let's move on. Last, let's get back to the last year was with the wing and <laughs> Iwakuni. It was nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you were real close to the, to the Air Force chicks, so it was. Yeah, I'm sure you loved it. Um, I hope your wife didn't hear that part. Anyways, um. <laughs> Maybe um, later. See it right now. Right, 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 right. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. All right. Poop. You want to get back to the word? You want to get back to the worship, my I man? Get back to worship. Are you ready? That's poop? it. Are you ready? Oh yeah, the Korean zombie. Did you see that? Did anyone catch that? You guys catch that? No, I did not. Catch well, guess it, what? I got a clip. So pull it up. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at what we got. <laughs> hey, while right. you while you pull you that got... clip up, bro, I want to get a beer. Is that cool? Yeah. I'm gonna get a beer. Yeah, well, I'm gonna do the same. Which one do you want? Which one do you want me to? No, no, no. Up? The first one I sent you is trash. Send the one that's a little, that's a minute long. It's like a minute and a half long. That'll give me time to grab a beer. I'll be right yeah, back. I think, it, I think it was the last one in our chat before we went on here. Yeah, the very Hopefully. last one. All right. The very last one. The other one's trash. All right, hold on. Here, let me pull it up. All right, I got it. All right, you want to introduce the clip and then go get your beer? Well, pretty much, you're going to watch the fight. zombie versus Renato. Mul the 58-second fight, baby. Yeah, you're yeah. going to watch the whole fight. It's a minute and 33 seconds long, so you better hurry up and introduce the clip. I'm going to grab a beer. A, yeah, well, I already introduced it. You're pretty much watching the full fight. It's 58 seconds long. Let's let's talk about it after we watch it. I know what happened. I'm going to grab a beer while you play it. All right, here we go. Chan Sung Jung, the Korean zombie, taking on Hanato Moikano. The fifth ranked featherweight in the UFC. They touch gloves and we are underway. Five possible rounds. Fast low kick there. Very, very fast. Renato Moicano settling as a minus 190 favorite. The sharp money was on him. Plus 160 as a small underdog. Public money on him, if you can believe it. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Oh, my God. surviving here, but Zombie's not done. Mokaino is surviving. It's incredible that he is. Trying to get underneath the chin, and now thinks better of it. But he's got Mokaino flattened out. And now he's raining down big shots. And that's it. Let's play that one more time. Let's play that one more time. In the UFC, I don't know why they call him the zombie. I guess because he's just so damn rounds. calm. I don't know, but like, I'm like, what is this guy doing? And all of a sudden, fists of fury, like Street Fighter style. Just, just kind of sizing him <laughs> up, sizing him up, sizing him up, and then. Oh, I got you, bitch. Boom! Oh, little jab. It's him coming back from the military, too. He had to miss part of his career. Oh! Stop. Oh! 
Look, Larry. I want to see that punch out one more time. Wow. <laughs> I just love that shit. Like, he just straight caught him. Turned his shin. That was... No, 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 no. Wow. Surviving here, but Zombie's not done. Makaino is surviving. It's incredible that he is trying to get underneath. Yeah, he was done. He could. He tried to try to flip and try and flip him off. He couldn't. That's it. Wow. The Korean Zombie. I love it. Yeah, they call. You know where he gets nickname? You guys nickname from walking through punches, man. Yeah. Like a zombie. We, that he got his he got his nickname from his chin. So he's he's got got a, the guy's got a helmet. Yeah. Well, how do you even hit it? It's again. like freaking right smaller than my son's. Boxing. Boxing <laughs> You're not good. You don't have much of a chin. I'm looking at his picture right now. That's yeah, a he, that's a little chin. That is a little chin. So how do you hit it, man? You know, I mean, holy that's shit. his advantage. Jesus, but I mean, whew, he's tough. So was he ex-military? He was. Uh, no, he. Service. He uh he had to put his career on hold for a little bit to go serve in the it, Korean military. And the Rock Those was the deal. Tough boys. He was because uh, a few years ago he was a headliner. Well, he's headlining now again, but yeah, he's showing he's back. That uh, military service, uh, he stayed sharp while he was in. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently. So, Holy and, crap! And while while I'm talking quick, I just a uh, quick shout out. I see. Uh, one of my guys from work, uh, Tanner St. Mary, he's uh, kind of in charge of sit, uh, the uh, section I work in. Um, usually tells me what I'm doing for the day. He's watching right now, so thanks for watching us. And Absolutely. Um, Share yeah, us out, too. He's always, he's always asking about our show, actually, when I'm at work. So glad he's actually watching while it's live. Sometimes I'll watch it at work, uh, and then I get to hear about it later. Like, yeah, we heard you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pook. Well, we watched the Korean zombie fight. What else you got for us, brother? Yeah, oh, you that, talk that, about that and, and how, uh, you know, maybe just a, maybe just a little bit. Just yeah. you know, I I like the guy. He was a two to one dog going into this fight. Yeah, he's come. He was coming off a loss, like like uh, like Mr. T said. He spent two years active duty in um the S South Korean Army, yeah. and he's yeah, coming back, he's coming and, back from that. And and since he's been back, he's had he's had one win, one loss, and then this fight last night with this impressive <clears throat> impressive knockout. He was a two to one dog. He wasn't even ranked in the top ten, and uh, he fought a guy ranked five, uh, Hinato uh, Carnero. However you say his name, he was he was, he was like uh, you know the next up and coming big thing, and uh, not he got a little bit of a setback after that one. <laughs> right. I yeah. saw the. I saw the. Did you see this whole family? Did 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 you see that in the clip? His whole family was around him, and they're yeah. all tearing up and everything. And it's like the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. What does the other guy feel? You know. Ooh, back to the drawing board for him. You know, he was climbing up the ranks. Yeah. The yeah. other thing. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, it's it's you know in team sports, I think it's it's a shared gut punch. You lose. You all feel it. It's kind of shared throughout it. But when it's mano a mano, oh, that's got to sting. That's gotta, I mean, we've all been in fights. I mean, I know me and Pookie. I mean, T, I didn't know you in the Marine Corps. You, you're, you're a youngin, a boot. But uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, Pook and I have been bit. in, Pook and I have been in, in, in uh, a lot of um, fisticuffs, and uh, you lose. It fucking, it stings, and it, it doesn't, it doesn't. And especially if you're fighting another Marine in the barracks, then it really freaking if you lose, it really fucking stinks. Although that 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 only happened to me one time, where I lost, lost. Uh, I fought Hernandez and uh, beat the brakes off of him. 
in front of everybody. And he was a big boy, if you remember. I mean, he wasn't big. He was fat. So, but Pookie's been enough of him. He knows. He knows. It, it, oh, when you lose it, it's I just fought, I fought Hernandez. He slapped me, remember? Uh, we uh, talked. Uh, slapped me in the freaking face. What the, the hell was he that? Did the, he did the same thing to me. That's how the fight started. We were talking trash, and he made fun of me because uh, one of the other guys, this is funny, hit me with a phone, which I never saw that coming. Um, and it, like, pretty much hit me in the back of the head when I was walking away and knocked me out, pretty much knocked me out. And he was making fun of me that I was a pussy and everything like that. And I'm like, okay. And everybody starts gallowing around. You feel a tension start. And I'm like, you know what? Fine. You know, you don't call me that, whatever. You know, you know, whatever, dude. Like, you're a fat ass. You shouldn't even be in the Marine Corps. You're, just, you're if I'm calling you a shit bag, you're a shit bag. And he slapped me. So I punched him in the chin, charged him, put him on the ground, and started beating the brakes off of him. And everyone was like, damn, Chimes. Like, wow, that's what they had to call me back then. And, and the Marine Corps was Chimes or Johnny. But, yeah, like, wow, that was, like, never thought you could do that. Whatever. But, yeah, that. that. What are you supposed to do? He did. He painted me in the corner like that, too. What exactly. are you what are you supposed to do? He never so learned, stupid. though. He never anyway, learned, hey. Though. Yeah, nah. keep going on with the UFC, man. Let's go. Yeah, anyway. Well, I want to talk a little bit about that Artem Lobov fight. The Artem Lobov <laughs> fight with Paul Manaji. Do you have a clip um, for me or no? I didn't. I didn't really put up a clip because uh, yeah. because it was my, got his ass kicked. <laughs> well, it was it was a, it was a decision, and Malnaji Malnaji really wasn't engaging. You know, he really yeah yeah he really was. It wasn't like you know. He's I guess dancing that's the better around. way of describing it than just got his ass kicked. Yeah, right. I mean, he, uh, he supposedly he said he broke his right hand in the second round or some crap like that on a combination or something like that, and uh, he was he just. Trying, he got on his bicycle. He was trying to like outpoint him in this bare knuckle event, and I don't think you can do that. I don't think the judges look at the fight the same way they do in a boxing ring, where if no. you just barely tap the guy here and there, get jab him, jab him, get out of the way of his punches, get out of the way of his punches, and you take minimal damage and you land more more punches, you're gonna you're gonna barely squeak out a win like it is in in, in pro boxing. Yeah. I mean, it's a different, it's a whole different climate. No, you know, they're looking and, for they're looking for the Mickey shot. You know, oh, it was a hey, the, the Mickey admit, shot from Snatch. They're like looking for that, that 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 chin shot that just drops the dude. You know. Ah, uh, yeah. You sound like you saw it, Mister T. You watch you watch the fight. Ah, uh, clips of it. I didn't see the fight live. Well, you but probably yeah, saw I, the whole thing. I, uh, I, I only missed the fourth round. <laughs> I saw every round but the fourth round because I was watching on my phone. I went out into the pit, and uh, and I got the guy that was doing the relief, and I said, Hey, you mind if I take? Take my break now. Take the first break. Normally, you never want the first break because now you're going to insure it at the end of the shift. But right. he goes, yeah, go ahead. So I, I, I walked in the pit and then walked right back in the break room, finished watching on my phone. You didn't miss much, man. I wish I wouldn't have gave up my break for it, honestly. Because it was, it was a lot of <laughs> – it was, man. A lot of Paul Malinaji just yeah. dancing around, dancing around, dancing around, trying not to get hit, trying not to get hit. He got caught. He got cut, you know. And – um. And maybe he might have won. Like, he complained about the decision afterwards. I don't know if you saw the press conference. But he complained about the, the decision. And, um, man, I don't know how he can. It's a bare-knuckle event, man. I mean, you know. Yeah. Well, he's he's got the name now because he was in Connor's training camp, even though they clashed over that stuff during the boxing fight. And he's – yeah, he's – probably better off just being a straight up boxer going back to doing his boxing than being an MMA fighter. Oh, he's, he's 38 he's, years old, man. He's, he, he already lost, he already lost his championships in boxing and this was going to be, he was going to make a little run at this. I think, I think that was his mindset. And now that he took yeah, a loss, now he took a loss. I think he's just going to go back to the showtime, go back to announcing fights. You know, he's yeah, the first I mean, that's, that's yeah, the other maybe, thing maybe there. Maybe you do a rap video with Max Kellerman. Yeah, I don't know, man. Are you saying Paul Malinaji looks have, like have a white you, rapper? Have you seen freaking that video? <laughs> Do you want me to play it? I'll freaking play it at the end of the show. I'll play it after the show because I don't want us to get kicked off again. Even though I you really don't everything. like you really don't like that guy. No, I want to beat the brakes oh. off of him. Like I want to. I, I, I think him, Max I, Kellerman, him. I, I think Max Kellerman, now. If, now, if you could get Pardos to set up your celebrity match with Max Kellerman, I think Max Kellerman would kick your ass, man. You out of fucking mind, you would dude. Kick your ass, man. You are just trolling me like it's going what? out of style. What kind of 
Hey, what kind of what what kind of fight is it going to be? Is it going to be a boxing fight? Are you going to no, be a we'll boxing? We'll do the club? octagon. We'll With do fist the octagon. Cup? We'll do octagon. We'll do that. We'll do MMA. Yeah. I'll beat the brakes off that dude. Seriously, hey, somebody look up Terrell. Look up his stats. Look What's up. up? Look up Max Rutgers? Kellerman. Look up Max Kellerman's height and weight. Max Kellerman's height and weight? Yes, because Pookie thinks he's going to beat the brakes off of me. He's going to kick is, in his ass. This he's is been my around best, Fox his whole but, life. But, oh, yeah, because, yeah, well, you that know what? That was sports You know what? So, you don't think that he has so a with some of these so guys? Somebody's, so some wife's married to a plumber for 40 years. She thinks she knows how to fucking plumb? I bet you she doesn't. Give okay, me a he's, uh, <laughs> Max Kellerman, a plumber's wife. He's five foot eleven, so same height as me. And trying to look up the weight wow. here now. <laughs> okay, let, wait. Come See on. now, I got, I got two different, two different things here on height. Now I got another thing saying he's five foot nine on a different site. See, I believe five foot nine. Come you on. You mean you're getting conflicting reports off the internet? Weird. I can't roll. I can't. Wait, what's his weight? 150? That's what I'm looking up right now. Come on. I got the, the got the height. Oh, you touched the height. Type in height and weight on line. Age 45 years and 10 months. Uh, boxing commentator. Where's the fucking weight? I'm just going to go back and type just straight up weight. Just delete the height part. Coke. I'm telling Talk you. to me. What are you, Talk I can't to believe you're telling me. You're, you're straight up telling one of your oldest friends, a guy in your wedding, the guy so that had you, you in my wedding, that so what Max Kellerman is going to beat me in a freaking MMA match. When I have one of the coaches... A guy who wrestled at the Ohio State University. You better have Cardos corner, Red, yeah, you in the corner, man. You better make this. And you better make this an MMA match because you got Pardos instead of a boxing match. Because if you make it a boxing match, you're in a lot of trouble, Minnie. You're in a lot of trouble. Do you know how to convert? You're gonna have to hold Max down, make him nervous, and smash his face. Well, because be you know how to convert plan. kilograms into pounds. Well, yeah, two they got his weight. He's uh seventy kilograms is what they got on here and five foot nine. So somebody convert it. So all right, seventy seventy kilograms is gonna be uh one forty plus four one fifty four. Oh my god, I got him by thirty pounds. At least yeah, mini, mini. And, if I, and if I bulk up oh jeez. If I bulk up, carb up, I you got gotta I, catch I go, the, I go nah, back nah, up nah. to one ninety five. Oh, can't go around picking on dudes the way that you guys got to make a weight. You guys got to fight at a catch weight. You guys, guys got to make a weight, man. You guys so, got to make. Uh, he's like, was he one fifty? All right, well you're gonna have to cut weight. You one fifty four, right? You should have to cut weight at least down to one hundred sixty five. Oh and you guys should get that weight. All right, fine, I'll do That's it. That's fair, man. Fair is fair. So, right. so you know, this is a box. Everything's the same. You, if, the one thing MMA's taught me over the years, before when they had style versus style, back in the early days of MMA, when there was style versus style, and and everyone was doing a little something a little bit different, and everyone was different sizes, right? Everybody's different sizes, and there were no weight classes in the early days. One thing that taught me is if everything's the same, or even if everything's close to the same, the bigger, stronger man's always going to win. Every time, man. Like... Like, like you can't freaking believe, you know? So that's such an advantage coming in there 30 pounds more heavy, you know? All right, so I, I'd have to cut weight to... You'd have to cut weight, and he'd have to, he'd have to probably bulk up. All right. Is this an Wait. MMA fight or a... You want to do an well, MMA. George Pardo just bubble. bought a cage and put it in his warehouse, so we can do it right there. We can do it oh, right there. And Pardo will train me, and I'm sure Keller will... Kellerman with his money Pardos? and all the things, he'll get the best trainers too, and we'll just see what happens. Dude, we'll Max ain't gonna fight you, man. I know he won't. He ain't gonna fight you, man. You uh, got, man, you gotta quit picking up. You know what? You got. You know what? Scared. You know what, Minnie? You know what you gotta start doing. You know what you gotta start doing if you want a real fight. If you want to promote VRS and you want a real fight, you gotta start picking a fight with someone who will actually fight you. 
Not these freaking soy boys that you've been picking left and right, man. You need to go freaking troll Dante Wilder. See what happened to that dude that trolled Dante Wilder. That's how oh, inter- No, no. I, I, I want to fight. I want to fight guys like Bill Maher. I want to fight guys like Max Kellerman. You know, I want to fight those guys. Who are, you know, I guarantee who are, these guys who are, who are who are so tough on TV, and they, they that's all oh, sound shakes, and they and they're called Tiger Woods out for going to going to the White House, accept the medal from Donald Trump, and I'm like, okay, all right, fine, all right, I'll tell you what, for charity, we'll do it for charity. I would do it for so, straight up charity. These and, guys, uh, you're, these guys that you're picking on, they're they're just gonna leave the fighting to the fighting men. They'll never show up, man. You got you to gotta go after somebody that's going to show up at least. Oh, I mean, come on. I mean, like, if, if that were to go through the right channels, I, I doubt he'd have a hard time. If, if it got viral enough, that he'd have a hard time turning down that fight. I mean, like, hey, think about this. this Are you just delusional? This, this just he's happened. not going to fight you, dude. Because <laughs> he's scared. He's going to lose. He knows he's going to lose. He's going to fight a Marine. He's terrified. No, but think, is, think about this. No, who, didn't they here, say the Bieber Cruz fight is supposed to that's, happen? That's, actually, that's what I was about to get to, Mister T. Was <laughs> that Justin Bieber just the other week challenged Tom Cruise, a man thirty years his senior, to an MMA fight? Now, Poop, you're our betting expert as far as overall. You know, I got the baseball. Well, I didn't have it down last week because I told you, you know, to to take the Astros. But uh, hey, I'm not right all the time. But That's right. I got my money back on, anyway. Even on baseball, but Tom Cruise, Justin Bieber, MMA fight. Who wins? And give me the odds, Pook. Buddy, I don't. You know, come on. Tom Cruise is fucking. Come on. Kind of buff, man. I mean, short, but. I mean, so he does Justin some Bieber. stunts for that uh, Mission Impossible thing. I know yeah. that. You know, so I don't know. He's got some. He's probably got some martial arts training. Yeah. You know. But if 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 Bieber, being the younger man, right, and if Bieber is taking this serious, I don't know how much he's training already. There's, you know, it's such an advantage knowing how to wrestle. Yeah. Do these guys have, you know, we before we could set eyes on this, we'd have to get a little, you know, get some. Did any of these guys even wrestle in high school? Did one of these guys wrestle? Did oh, these guys ever wrestle? Tom Cruise I mean, that's that, pretty huge right there. Did Tom Cruise that's do that movie about wrestling in high school? Or was that Matthew... Is that Vision Quest? Was he in yeah, that? Yeah, I thought that's that the was, movie. I, 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 thought I that think was that's Tom the movie you're thinking of. Yeah. I mean, there's a big difference between doing a movie and, and learning yeah, learning how to well, make yeah, the moves. But in the in it. the wrestling and the wrestling in the movie Vision Quest was terrible. Uh, well, all right. <laughs> if you here's the thing, like, like that was you definite wrestling, acting wrestling. Like if one of these guys have been wrestling since they were like six years old, which we don't know. Right. Well, I'm it, sure Justin yes, Bieber you, wasn't doing that. I don't think he was because he was singing on the street, right, when he was right. that age. But uh, I don't know. What kind of match is this going to be? Is this going to be a boxing match? No, I'll, I'll do MMA. It's going to be MMA, MMA, MMA I thought. No, it's going to be MMA. Yeah. 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 Mickey Severson's got my back. He says, he says you better not lose, Minnie. Hell yeah, kick Kellerman's ass. Uh, yeah, like, come on, man. Like, come on. Pook, this is my boy right here. My boy. My boy. Hey, I'm not saying I would be in your corner. (laughs) I'm just saying this guy has been around the fight game for a long time. You know, and like you're making the analogy that he's the, the, if these guys are the fighters. So Jim Day can, so so Jim Day can shoot a three-pointer now because he's been around basketball his whole life. Like, give me a break. That's why I was. That's why I was asking earlier too with the uh, if it's going to be boxing or MMA because oh, if you got MMA. Pardos and uh if you got if you got Pardos and uh, he gets Hammer Coleman in your corner teaching you MMA you'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll yeah. be fine. I'll destroy that guy. Yeah. I'll destroy. You're right him. about that. You're right about that. I mean, Pardos, we got to make the boxing Pardos. match so Max stands a chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Max has to be able to stand a chance. Max is never going to sign off on this. This is ridiculous. This I is know, going... but it's fun to talk about. Like, and hey, it's, we can send him emails and be like, "Hey, we're going to do a charity uh, MMA fight against uh, some unknown host, uh, Marine veteran, and <laughs> you, and promote it." And you know, see, and he'll say no. But well, he'll I just love... say he'll take one look at you and he'll think you're from Duck Dynasty. <laughs> he won't want anything. He won't want anything to freaking do with you. You're too right wing already. You know he's Jeez. this guy's. 
You know what that's what they called me in the Bahamas? Like everybody in the Bahamas on our honeymoon. That's what everybody called me. All, I believe all it. The, the, hey, Duck Dynasty. Hey, why I'm do like, I why do I have trouble not believing that? Come on. <laughs> good, good, good thing you went to the Bahamas and not Minikin. Oh God. <laughs> I would love to see that. I would love to do that. I would go and I would train with Pardos, which would not be fun because Pardos, I think training me would be a complete dick to me. But He'll grind your dick into the dirt. Yeah, he, he will was. make you freaking pay like you can't believe. Yep. You will be sweating. <laughs> like You will be sweating doing push-ups. Your hands will be slipping out from underneath you. It'd be awesome, though. I mean, it, don't it, be running yeah. bills. It, for charity. Oh my god! And I got my mandatory flash for my wife for the show. Um, yeah, I mean that we. I would absolutely do that for charity, you know. And whoever, you know, we both pick our charities, and whoever wins, the money goes to said charity, whether it's Mission Twenty Two or you know, Mister Max Kellum. I, I still want to fight Bill Maher. And George always trolls me. He's like, "Oh, you can't beat Bill Maher." I'm like, "Are you serious? That guy's like, no." He's Bill Maher's a Bill Maher's a skinny old frail dude from what he looks like. Yeah. I don't know, maybe not. But like like Max Kellerman still has a little bit of youth on him, man. Yeah, but he's just a Yeah, he's man. I, a, I bet he's, you he has gotta be close to your age. Yeah, not, I you think know? he is. Yeah. I think he is close to yeah. my age. And Bill I, I, I like, like I like I like his, his right, like five I, yeah. the ring. You break his freaking hip, bro. I don't know why you wanna beat <laughs> you wanna beat up you talk about Justin Bieber going after people thirty years older than him. Yeah. How old do you think Bill Maher is, man? Uh, 167. <laughs> Maybe. 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 <laughs> Looks like it. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see what's here. Uh, let's see. Make your service. So, boy, Kellerman wouldn't fight anyone. I idolize your right of Bernie Sanders. Well, you know, I see, that's what I dis I'll disagree. It's like, I think that would make it that much better as you have right versus left and and Kellerman's a big lefty he's a big lefty Lou like unfortunately like a lot of people at ESPN which I, I don't hate. get that I don't get that I, I don't get I don't that either. I, I don't know I don't where get, here's the thing, like, when it happened here's, a, here's the thing like I, I I'm pro gun man I I'm a former marine I'm big time pro gun You're not you a think I want to huh okay whatever you want to call it I, I I did get a I did get honorable discharge so whatever you want to call it a anyway anyway right I'm pro gun. You think? I was, well, now I am. I guess I am on a sports show. Fuck, I, I screwed up. But in general, with, without something like this, without you telling me about some, this guy's a lefty Lou and he's not afraid to freaking talk about it during sports on ESPN. Well, come on, man. I don't even want to hear a guy talk about gun rights or anything that interests me, like anything that would be considered. I want to hear that. That's my sports, man. I want to keep that compartmentalized. I want to keep that separate, man. You know? I gotta For crying out loud. You know what I'm saying? I gotta Get find it, this video of Max Kellerman. I swear to God, I gotta find it. What's play. he doing? He's rapping, man. He was a rapper. He was a he was he was a a rapper. Is he rapping with Paul Malnagi? I don't know. You got he their own group rapping. or what? Let's see here. Did, oh, here we go. All right. You know what? I'm just gonna. You know what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna mute it so I don't get in trouble. But you can see it. it. Of course, there's a 20 second delay, but you can see it. This is Max Kellerman. I'm muting it because I don't want Facebook. I don't have the filter installed on my computer yet. But yeah, this is Max Kellerman act, acting hard. Yeah, gold chain, <laughs> bald head. You know, he's got some brothers in the background to give him some street cred. He's wearing a really mm. fucked up Scully. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I mean, he might, he might have some punches in him. He might, he, you know, but I, I still think I could take him, man. After watching this video, he's gonna kick your ass. Oh, okay. He's gonna kick your ass. Look, he might even shoot you. Oh, you yeah. know what you're really getting into here? Do you have any idea what you're getting into? This is this 1994. I was at boot camp. I was getting this ready to go dude, to boot camp in 94. This dude, so he's got to be at least a couple years older than you probably. I think but so, yeah. Th man, this dude looks like the type of guy that would shoot you just to impress the brothers in back of him. You're in a lot of trouble, bro. He's you're out. in a lot of Get trouble here. Get out of here. Get the fight out with the here. Guy, you're going to take a pair of MMA? Yeah, I'm 
I'm scared. I'm so scared uh, of a 90s rapper who has to pay black guys to give him street credit in his video. I'm terrified of that guy. So terrified of that guy. Yeah, you know, you know, many times me and, hey. you know how many times me and Tatum fought? You know how tough that guy was, right? That always ended in a draw. And Tatum was a tough, he was crazy, he was a racist prick, but he was tough. And we fought all the time. Well, he hated Yankees, too, so I don't know how you guys got along so well. Because uh, <laughs> I think we just understood each other. Just that, you know, like we had a common ground of, you know, push it too far, we're going to fight. And if we fight, then fine. But, you know, we were we were okay. Like, we lived together. When I moved out of the barracks, we, I moved in with, with fuck Tatum. Yeah, three hundred dollars a month. Well, six hundred dollars a month. We split it down, the, split it down the pipe, and uh, yeah, and we and I still got in fights with Tatum in bars in Oceanside, and he was my cleanup guy. Like if I got, I, I bit up more than I could chew, Tatum would just clean it up. Dude, that same apartment that you rented for like six hundred bucks. I yeah. remember that apartment. I guarantee you, right now in Oceanside, I guarantee you that thing's going low. Low would be freaking like fourteen. Oh 14. yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, probably most of the most of the guys when I was out at Pendleton, they get places out in Vista and stuff because it was further, a little oh, further yeah. away from uh, the uh, base. Uh, it was Vista Lounge, yeah. right, right yeah, there. I lived there like, too. I lived wow. there too. Vista Lounge. I did. I did live there. Yeah, I had a pool and a bar. Yeah, and and my, everything. Yeah. All right. My buddy, uh, my buddy Ray was at the Bel Airs out there in uh, Vista. <laughs> The Bel Air apartments. That's where we hung out a lot. <laughs> we gotta kill some time. We only got about 15 minutes. We gotta cut it short. We gotta cut about five minutes short so George can uh, reconfigure uh, XSplit for his show tonight. Um, I'm trying to think of what we can talk about as far as like goats. Um, Do we want to go football? Do well, we, we could, go. we could. St- I, I definitely want to crown Artem Lobov the uh, goat of bare knuckle boxing right now. Okay. Well, I can't argue that because I don't know shit. I think maybe somebody that. should, yeah. but that's kind of why I threw that out there. But all right, never mind. All right. How about this? I was, How about I was, this? I was gonna. Go ahead, T. I was gonna. Tr- I was gonna crown uh, Mickey Severson the goat of hashtags, but he didn't give us a hashtag dicks out for Harambe yet. He did what the hell? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. It's in there. <laughs> oh, he did? Where? I it's didn't see it. It was his first post. Dick South Harambe, worst babysitting job ever, and his the Cubs first still post I've seen. Yeah, he first did three post hashtags. I've seen from him. It's not that the Cubs suck. Cause the Cubs first are post really I've seen from him was, you better not lose many. <laughs> Just can't rely on <laughs> um, I didn't even. All right. I didn't even see that. How well, then, about- then he's the GOAT. He's the goat for hashtags. <laughs> um, Dicks off for Harambe. What exactly does that mean, anyway? You don't know Harambe? What's going on uh, with that? Harambe, the gorilla, was a that, gorilla guy, that got shot by the Cincinnati shot police Cincinnati. department because some whiskey tango mom let her son climb into the enclosure. Right, room. right. I remember this now. Okay, so I know who Harambe is now. Dicks out for Harambe. Yeah, that's just the this thing kind of a meme thing. Started. Yeah. Harambe became like a a meme legend. Meme legend, especially in the veteran community. Is he the new Cecil the Lion? Yes, yes. He was before so. Cecil the Lion. Yeah, he was, was he before, really? Yeah, he was before Cecil. The oh, Lion. this is a long time ago. Then I no wonder I don't remember this. All right, let's do this. All right, your team. It's the Brewers. It's the Pook. You're the Dodgers now. Well, you got a Padres jersey. Padres. On. He's got a Padres jersey yeah. on. So you got a Padres <laughs> jersey on. I'm a Cubs fan. Uh, your team is in the World Series. All I'm a Cubs fan, dude. All, I know you are too, but I'm a Cubs fan, dude. All right, all, you want to give me? The, all but you want to the Dodgers? Equal. Let's give the chance. Give me the Dodgers then out here. All right, I'll give you the Dodgers. But all right, so I'll give you the scenario: the Brewers for Mr. Well, team. you got stuck with the Brewers. Maybe the I Brewers, could be stuck. The Brewers. The Brewers. All right, look. Just erase all this. Your team. <laughs> Is in Game Seven of the World Series. You can pick any pitcher from history to be your Game Seven starter. Who do you pick, Mister T? Any pitcher in history, one that's on right any now, pitcher. or 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 one throughout the the modern era of baseball. Who would you pick? 
So it doesn't got to be anybody that played for your team at any point. It, it, it could be anybody. Anybody who's played for your team, anybody who's played for anybody, any, it's just a modern era. Mm. I'm going Greg Maddox. I like that choice. Good choice. Uh, why do you pick Greg Maddox? Dude was lights out, had the velocity, was able to control the ball. He um, never had velocity. That guy couldn't break a fucking painted glass. With he face. had he a bit of a wild thing back when he I don't he, know. Was, he couldn't hit 90 after he was like 20. Really? No. Well, no, he was always a movement guy. Always. That I mean, yeah, yeah his two-seam fastball broke more than a lot of guys' sliders. But that was his thing, was his two-seam oh. fastball and his get it over curveball. And, yeah, and his his. I guess I guess it's just because I remember watching him a lot when I was younger because oh, the Braves too. are really oh, yeah, when I was too, younger. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, it was Maddox and uh, Tom Glavin and, and Steve Tommy Avery, Glavin, Avery, yeah, and Steve Avery, yeah, yeah, those guys. So they I got like a that. hell of a lineup. I I, I yeah. like I like Greg Maddox. That's a, that's a good choice, man. Um, real good choice for a Game Seven starter. I like it. I like yeah. it. Uh, Pook, uh, what do you think? Yeah, I know. I know who I'm taking, man. Who? Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan for Game Seven. Yeah, okay. you, you asked me the that question was once. My, yeah, All that right. was my second choice. Was Nolan Ryan? I'm gonna take. Um, I'm gonna take Kirk Schilling. I'm gonna take Kirk. Ooh, Schilling the game bloody, sevens. the bloody sock. I love Kirk Schilling's fake. attitude. It was phony. Oh, was just... whatever. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. That uh, that uh. Elizabeth Warren tried to say it was a uh, Yankees fan after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it Elizabeth, Was it her or what, who was it? I think it was Elizabeth Warren, wasn't it? Uh, I, Elizabeth I so, Warren yeah. is that the lady that thinks she's Indian? Oh no, no, no! It wasn't her. It was um, it was whoever was the Democrat that was running for uh, Senate against uh, Scott Brown when Scott Brown won the uh, Senate seat there. Hmm. I forget her fucking name. But she went on. She went on some sports station in Boston and said that Kurt Schilling was a Yankees fan after he endorsed Scott Brown. Oh, that's uh, what. It was. Okay. Um. All right. How about you? You're in the Super Bowl. You've got one quarterback to pick throughout history. Who do you pick, Pook? Montana. Joe Montana, huh? All things being equal, yeah. you, you pick Joe Montana. All yeah. Right. All right. All right. Yeah, because if I just go by skills, I take Dan Marino. Well, the, that's the, you gotta go. I mean, that's kind of the exercises. Like you gotta go by skills, not by the. Team. No, I'm not going by skills. I'm going by the intangibles, man. I'm going by the guy that's done it and and freaking has beaten the odds. I know me and Terrell are probably gonna have the same answer, but I don't know. Maybe we'll not. Well, Mr. T, Aaron Rod, what you, you guys got? are gonna go with Rodgers, man. I'm going. I'm going with Bart Starr. Oh, really? Right. Oh, cool. it, oh, in, well, the, in the modern all, era, in the modern era, you're gonna pick him. Okay, all right. Even though, even though, if you go, even though he's old school, if you look at his numbers and what he did in that time time period of football, he was way ahead of the game on passing. Yeah, well, <laughs> he just true. was, and he knew how to manage a team out on the field. This is true. This is true. So I'm 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 going with Bart Starr, even right. though you know he's dead now. He just died recently, but maybe that sways my opinion right. a little bit. Let me, what you're let looking me, at the article lately right. about Both him. Both you guys, who do you guys think I'm going to pick? Aaron Rodgers. Nope. Bart, Brett, uh, Favre. Brett Favre. Brett Favre. I'm going to take Brett, Brett Favre every Brett, every time, six days Brett of the week, Favre. And twice on Rick. Sunday. I'm gonna take Brett Favre. I know that guy's gonna win or lose it on his arm, and, <laughs> and I and I love that. And that's why I picked Kurt Schilling because that dude. I I like gamers. I like guys that are just, just, in it and just so intense about it and just so in the moment because that's how I played everything. And granted, I didn't have a tenth of the talent that any of those guys did, even in baseball. But. Uh, I play with that intensity. Every every single pitch meant something to me. Every single play meant something to me. Like the world hanged in the balance on me turning a double play, or it it, it, it turned on balance me being able to do a sack fly, 
or, you know, at least getting the ball to the right side of the field so I could, you know, advance the runner. Like, it, it, it hung on that. And I love guys like that. I love the intense, emotional guys. Like, Carlos Brattle, who I met several times at Wrigley Field and, and once at uh, the bar I worked at, just catty corner, uh, bleachers in Wrigley Field. And I met him. I met Kyle Farnsworth, who, by the way, had the greatest takedown and best fight ever. Um, you know what? If I can look that up, I might I might play that, actually. Um, Kyle Farnsworth. I was watching this game live at home. Uh, Kyle Farnsworth threw up and inside uh, to Paul Wilson from the Cincinnati Reds. And, uh, yeah, we're going to play it. We're going to play it. You guys, uh... My beer pour from some users. Yeah, I got that part. All right. There we go. I'm getting a beer that many. Hold on. You got to watch this, dude. I'll, I'll watch go. it on my phone. And I'll take it in the kitchen. The get a beer. So they don't have to... There we go. Start over. And Oops. Oh, he threw inside. The and Miller, so they don't have to sacrifice now. As Olmedo moves. And now Wilson and Farnsworth get into it. Oh, a takedown uh. by Farnsworth. And a couple of haymakers landed. Whoa! I hope they replay the take. There it is. Well, first of all, that ball wasn't inside all that much, and Farnsworth doesn't want to throw it to the screen. And then Wilson has something to say about, well, that's going to be okay. It was Wilson that went out to get Farnsworth. Big mistake. <laughs> he gets, he right gets the beat plate. break off him. Oh, he just got the break speed off him. I love it. I was watching that live in Chicago. It was awesome like he just straight i mean he's like oh yeah you're, you're throwing at me and he was i don't think it was an intentional thing it's just kyle threw really hard and threw really long and by the way he was a tremendous man whore just because i worked at a bar where he hung out at and, and trust me he was a man whore which you know hey you know do your thing man you know i'm not gonna hate on you for that you know but uh he was a big boy, and for Paul Wilson to come out at him like that, that was the stupidest thing you could possibly do. Like, you got to stand up for yourself, but he got the break speed <laughs> off of him. Yeah, he, I mean, uh, he, got he didn't look too good. You got to you gotta at least get that sprawl going if the guy's going to shoot in on you like that. <laughs> he doesn't know the trick, man. He doesn't know the yeah, trick. Yeah, I guess, man. He, he didn't trick. sprawl at all. Here's the trick. Here's the trick. What you do is if you charge a mound, you got to do two things. You got to do it quickly. And, oh, yeah. And you take your helmet off and you throw it at the pitcher as soon as you come within one step of hitting distance. Well, that yeah, that's the other thing there. The the pitcher shouldn't be the one that's shooting in on your legs when you're getting the when you're getting the brawl going. Yeah, <laughs> if the up. pitcher is the one that's the aggressor getting the uh, the shot in there when he was the one that threw it inside, you're doing something wrong, man. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Um. So let's do our final thoughts and let's close off. Um. Uh, Pook, you go first. All right, man. Hey, Korean Zombie all the way, baby. KZ time. We've just seen it. That was that was an impressive victory. I love that. Uh, I love the, I love the Korean Zombie. I love what he brings to the sport, man. He's he's bringing a whole new market into the yeah, UFC. That's awesome. So, yeah, that man, is I'm good. you know that, that's exciting because I'm you know I'm a, I'm a fan of the sport. I want to see it grow. And um, up upcoming here, we're gonna have uh Nagano who's gonna be fighting. You know about that guy, right? Yep. He's got the hard, hard, heaviest punch of anybody in uh, probably combat sports. He's going to be fighting Dos Santos coming up next week. So that'll be interesting. Tune in for that. I'll be definitely talking about it. So Cool. Mr. T. Hey, we didn't cover women's soccer on this show for a reason. Fuck you, TV, for shoving that shit down our throats. And fuck you, Rapino, for fucking protesting the flag. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you totally on that. Um... Uh, my final thoughts, look forward to Kellerman versus Kremlin, UFC 280 in Columbus, possibly. You know, for charity, Mr. Pardos is coming up next. Will uh, certainly train me and beat me into, into the ground so that I don't lose. But I'm still going to challenge Max Kellerman to a fight. 
I would love to see it. I'd love to do it for charity. That dude's gonna shoot you. Did you see his rap video? Oh, <laughs> he's yeah. a fucking shot, Minnie. He's a tough You're guy. You're screwing he's, the wrong he's, guy. He's, he's a got a he's, he's got a butterfly a... knife in his sock. Yeah, yeah, he's a super <laughs> tough guy. Yeah, I'm terrified. Of I him. saw that video. I saw the rap video. Yeah, I saw yeah. it. That's, yeah, that's true story. Yeah. That's true story. Yeah. Hey, All right. hey, it hey. Was it was fucking embarrassing. I don't. Oh, wait, there's a trash can right here. Kick. All right, gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Mr. T. Thank you, Poog. Uh, I'm sorry, Pops couldn't make it. do an auto racing segment for you. He'll be back next week, I'm sure. And we will whip him and give him punishment in due time. But thank you all for tuning in the show, listening, He's retired. commenting, He's a guy, man. He's and. Uh, and sharing out the show and, and being a part of Sports Church and helping it get bigger and better every single week. We love you all. Thank you all. God bless. We are out.